know this dessert place is new, mm. and so they're having an opening day special, and everything is free. You're kidding! No way! Way? Do you think we'll get any? I have such a sweet tooth. Come on, I'll race you inside. Oh. But cakes and pastries aren't very good for you. There's little, if any, food value or vitamins, and besides, they're very high in calories and fat. Yada, 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 yada. Come on, Amy. Don't be a load, because cake's a good source of energy. I know I've had a tiring day, and I would love a sugar booster. How about everyone else? You'll get fat. Artemis. Don't blame me when you're bursting out of your scout clothes. Moon Podcast Escalation! <laughs> My name is Jordan D. White. My name is Chris Sims, and this is Sailor Business. It's the podcast where we sit down with a friend each and every week and watch an episode of the classic 1992 anime, Sailor Moon, and talk about just why it is that we love it so much. And I said last week that Sailor Moon R was a season of ups and downs, and we had some downs last week, but oh brother, (laughs) do we have some ups this time. We are going to be watching episode 76, Magic of Darkness, Esmeralda's Invasion, and it's amazing. I wrote down, this is the best, three (laughs) times in my notes for this episode. Wow. I'm so excited. Wow. Uh, To help us talk about that, we have invited back to the show uh, one of the co-hosts of the Jim Jam podcast, one of our favorite guests to have around, Annie Creighton. Welcome back. Annie, how are you? I am very glad to be here. Are you ready for a cake buffet? Are you I'm, ready for cake monsters? I am ready for Esmeralda and the infinite cake. Oh, so I've this episode is great. Esmeralda uh, is like Esmeralda is one of my favorite bad guys next to like the Amazon trio and uh, probably Jadeite. She's basically girl Jadeite. She is. She really is. Uh, Except that, as we find out today, her plan involves building sexy statues. Yeah. Uh, But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, Annie, you are a you've been on the show. This is your fourth episode. So if people want to hear about your history with Sailor Moon, they can go back to episode 51, which was your first appearance. Uh, But yeah, any uh, any new developments in your your Sailor Moon fandom that you'd like to discuss? Well, I'm going to admit it. I found a place where I liked Rini. Whoa. And it involves three words, sorry, four words, pink sugar heart attack. Okay. When she, uh. Did Rini just text? (laughs) Yeah, that's her. She said thank you. So pink sugar heart attack. Uh, When Rini gets to be like a, like Sailor Mini Moon or Sailor Chibi Moon or whatever, uh, she gets this little wand and uh, it's totally useless and it just hits people with like a little, it's got a little song and it hits them with a little with a little heart that's totally useless and they're just like, ah, hey, cut it out, quit that. <laughs> oh, and it's great. Chibi. Speaking of little songs, uh, I, I I'm gonna go ahead and tell everybody in our break what? between recording episodes, Annie, you sang us on a, a full length. Uh, version of the song Sisters from White Christmas that was called Cousins and was about uh, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. We got to hear that. that. You have not heard that, listeners. (laughs) One day you will. One day. Uh, Also, Annie, you have a lovely singing voice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I use it for for good only. (laughs) So, uh, Jordan, before we get into the episode, do we have any uh, listener questions we want to talk about? Any any, anything from the, the Twitter? Uh, I don't of think course. we've got anything new in the emails this week, but uh, while you are pulling up Twitter, I will check on those. We've got lots of Twitter, but uh, but I will say definitely send us more questions on Twitter at Sailor Business uh, because we love getting those questions and we love answering them. Here we go. Uh, here's one from another one from Bunny Saurus Rex. Do you think Queen Serenity had to shout ridiculous attack names when she used her magic back in the Silver Millennium? Uh, I don't know what you mean by ridiculous attack names. <laughs> well, we were just talking about pink sugar heart attack, for example. I I do not. I've never seen pink sugar heart attack. Uh, if you're new to the show, uh, I have. Wa- Jordan has watched the entire series. 
uh, start to finish. I have watched. It has a bad memory. <laughs> I have watched up through R and uh, love the first season, have some difficulties with the second, but I love it in episodes like this. So uh, we're about to get into some territory that I have never seen, but I love the name Pink Sugar Heart Attack. That is an Dang. awesome name for an attack. I mean, Moon Princess Halation is not great. I had to also, look up what she... Halation meant. And yeah, me too. It uh, And that was not what Halation meant. I mean, it just means light. It means light. It's a specific light. Also, does she have to stop using that if she becomes queen? Is that how that works? I guess she has Moon Queen Halation, which oh. should be like super more powerful. I'm going to go with yes. Well, hmm. Maybe it's one of those things like in Harry Potter world where if you get powerful enough, you don't have to say the spell names out loud. Here, here is my question. Uh, is Queen Serenity an anime character? If so, yes. She said weird names for her attacks while she did them. That is not a thing that is limited to Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh, that's probably true. Oh, well. Here's a question from Emily Aguila. Uh, don't know if you saw Assassination Classroom, but when 75% of the moon was blown up, was the moon kingdom spared? Uh... Is this like okay? Assassination classroom sounds weird. <laughs> so none From of us have seen accounts, it. It's weird as heck. Oh, so you saw it? I I have I know people who have seen it, okay. but I have not seen it myself. So but I have seen it. Sorry. All accounts, it is weird as heck. I'm gonna say yes. Definitely, the Moon Kingdom was spared. <laughs> but none of us have seen it, unfortunately. Have you bought Chris? Have you bought a copy of the uh, the the hideous uh, Memorial T-shirt? I haven't yet, but I'm still very tempted to. I haven't yet, but I've got a birthday in August. There you go. So heads up, everybody. Here we go. I think we've talked about this before. Have you guys read The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter? If not, how can I send you guys a copy? Uh, I have not. Is this the one that we... That's a... That's the one with the uh, with the girl who was born in a rice stock. That's, uh, that's the one with um, with the moon princess who has... Uh, Kurage Hime. Okay. Uh, Kaguya. Kaguya Hime. That's a... Uh, Kagehime is a different thing. Kagehime is the story of the girl who was born in a piece of bamboo who was really tiny, who got big, who was going to marry the emperor, but didn't because she had to go back to the moon. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. It's it it is pretty clear when we that 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 our guests are way smarter than us about everything about these shows. <laughs> Did you mean way bigger weeaboo? Because that's the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, we're not experts. We just like the show and own microphones. We just bought the domain name, everybody. That's all we did. You can do it, too. The thing about Kaguyahime is that it's one of those stories like Cinderella is in our culture where it just shows up everywhere. Mm -hmm. So if they're making an allusion to Kaguyahime, uh, it's usually pretty clear. Okay. It was also great because when they did that in Okami, which is like the best PlayStation 2 game, which is all about like Japanese folklore and you're like a wolf who's also the sun goddess. When they do Kageyahime, she has little, like, grass stalks. Uh, they're, like, ears, like rabbit ears on the top of her head. And she's wearing, like, a little bamboo spacesuit. And then she goes back to the moon <laughs> in a rocket. <laughs> uh, okay. Bamboo spacesuit sounds awesome. It's pretty great. I love that game. Uh, well, yeah, like, so if, if, this is a, if this is a thing that you can send us that is online, you can send it to sailorbusinesspodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And if not, you can always write to us there and we'll talk about it. We'll figure out something out. Genevieve says, I've always wondered if Mamoru breaking up with Yusagi was a test of their love. Doesn't that mean that he failed and she passed? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Mamoru oh, failed snap. at being a boyfriend. <laughs> By breaking up with his girlfriend? Yeah, I mean, I that's the definition of failing at being <laughs> a boyfriend. In <laughs> fact. <laughs> um, speaking of Mamoru, uh, to return to my favorite thing in the world, Michael Dunphy tweeted us twice and said, um, so Tuxedo Mask is a dude with a bunch of friends who tries to solve problems on his, on his own, even though he works best in a team. Sounds like you could argue that the first truth of Tuxedo Mask is that he's never alone. Uh, I have had it up to here with these Tuxedo Mask Batman comparisons. <laughs> you can't see it, but I am gesturing very close to the top of my head. <laughs> oh, so there's still a little bit more we could do? I'm not, like, I'm not screaming right now, am I, Jordan? <laughs> Tuxedo, common. No, no. Ban rejected. Premise rejected. Discussion banned. All right, let's do. Uh, here's another one. James Gibson. Now, uh, this is a 
time shift, time shift, because this question is with WrestleMania coming. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was uh, about a month ago. But go on. Look, look, we do our best. <laughs> With WrestleMania coming, who would Makoto be rooting for in the big matches? Uh, Ambrose, Lesnar, Shane Taker, and HHH, or Triple H Roman, sorry. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, Makoto would probably be a, 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 no, it's tough. Uh, I don't, I think she would be very ambivalent to Ambrose Lesnar. Shane Undertaker, she'd probably be rooting for Shane. She'd probably be ambivalent to Triple H Roman. Until, did either of you watch WrestleMania? No. Okay, short version. I, I heard about a thing where some uh, Saiyans came out of a cereal box. Yes, that happened, and it was great. Uh, but in the main event, they have done everything they can to make Roman Reigns seem like a good guy by making his opponents seem terrible. So even though Roman himself did not get a very good entrance, uh, like he just came out and went to the ring, Triple H's entrance in that match involved Stephanie McMahon... Uh, who is his real life wife and also storyline wife on a tower, uh, removing a skull mask and standing up to reveal that she is basically dressed like a Mad Max character yelling about how the audience is all of their slaves and they exist only to serve them. And it was amazing. It was one. It was the best WrestleMania entrance since last year when Rusev came out on a tank. So wow. I would say that would have won Makoto over to uh, Triple H's side, much like it did uh, inadvertently everyone who watched. God, I need to get into wrestling. But that was supposed to be that he's a bad guy? Yes. So she would be rooting for the bad guy? Uh, yeah, that's the magic of pro wrestling, Jordan. That you root for the bad guy. Chris, this is a question yes. for you from that guy, Angelo. Chris, okay. what's the better one quarter monster, Ray Hino or Nicki Minaj's verses on the Kanye song? Uh, Nikki's verse on Monster. <laughs> I have considered getting a tattoo that was Nikki's verse on Monster, and I just mean the words, quote, Nikki's verse on Monster. Wow. End quote. Like, on a scroll on my arm. All right, well. I just listened to that for the first time the other day. Oh, my God. Can I, can I ask you, Chris, to do the verse for me? No. Please? You sure? <laughs> no. But I don't oh, know the lyrics. Well, well, Jordan, that is a that is a thing you are going to have to hear someone else do. I do not think it is appropriate for me to do Nikki's verse on Monster. Oh, I don't even know why. You'll find uh, out. Probably because he's a white man. Yeah, there you go. And he knows. <laughs> and he gets it. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess I'll have to check it out. It's a, it's a, the verse is a little specific. Yeah. <laughs> Just a shade. Uh... Um, and then I do also want to mention just how much awesome fan art we get. Uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, definitely follow us on Twitter and definitely go on our Twitter and look up our likes. We got we've got pictures of uh, Sailor Moon talking about the patriarchy, pictures of Jedi selling hot dogs at a hot dog stand, uh, pictures of a version of Garfield and Friends where the Sailor Scouts are the friends. <laughs> Picture. You mean like Barnyard USA? Yeah, well, no, like, but just Garfield and the Sailor Scouts instead of Garfield and them. Oh, um, okay. Pictures All of right, Queen, uh, with, of Bernie Sanders as Queen Beryl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I asked, I asked for that one. That one's on me. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, Catsy drawn in Kirby style, in a Jack Kirby style, which was pretty sweet. A Queen Beryl looking at her cell phone saying, my phone is almost dead. Bring me Naru. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, great stuff. I still, need to, I still need to sit down and draw today, like, wise man saying she has eaten the pancake. Now she will never return to us. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. That we need that. Oh, also... Uh, uh, there was a great conversation, and this was a while ago, about uh, if the Dark Kingdom is the office, says Gregory, uh, Gregory Mon Monkey Fist, if Dark Kingdom is the office, the Black Moon Clan should be arrested development. Uh, and that was pretty awesome. And then they all started, uh, then people all started making all great arrested development references. Uh, has anyone on, the, on this moon ever even seen a rabbit? Uh, all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's some pretty good stuff. It's some pretty good stuff. So oh definitely, if, you, if you're if you not following our Twitter, check out our Twitter, at Sailor Business. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of great stuff there. Uh, again, check out the faves. Uh, you'll see some really, really cool stuff. Uh, we got uh, Hellboy dressed as specifically 
uh, Chibi Moon. Uh, so instead of his horns, he has her pigtails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Pretty love great. It. Love it. Uh, but you know what else I love? Jordan, Annie. What? I love Sailor Moon R episode 76, Magic of Darkness, Esmeralda's Invasion. Now, let's talk about the title for a moment. Okay. Because that is not the title I would give this episode in either version. Yeah, I would know. It is a bad <laughs> a bad title all over. Uh, <laughs> I, I think not... any suggestion of Esmeralda and the Infinite Cake would be better. Yes. Yes. Like, this is crazy. Um, I guess let's do... Let's do Chris guesses the episode title for the Deke version, and I'll just tell you flat out. It's a shit title, and it's much closer to the Japanese than it is to what we would like it to be. Okay, because I was thinking the obvious title for this one is Piece of Cake. No, that would be great. No. Yeah, like that or Let Them Eat Cake. Were like, I, would, I would have put money on it because they're so obvious. You would have lost money because you have to get way boringer. Uh, let's see. What's, what's Esmeralda's English name? Emerald. Emerald? Okay. Uh, is it just like, you know, like Emerald Strikes? It's basically, it's Emerald Takes Over. Emerald Takes Over? Okay, uh, I mean, that's, that's at least accurate. She about, does not particularly invade with the magic of darkness in this episode. They should have called it Emerald Kicks It Up a Notch. <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. All right, you guys have fun. I'm... <laughs> I gotta go. He's wiping his hands of his favorite episode. <laughs> Look, I'll, I'll go talk about this with, with Aiden. She watched it with me. We'll have a, we'll have a good discussion. Uh, we'll have our own podcast. Blackjack. <laughs> Should I catch everybody up to where we are, Jordan? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Can I have like like three seconds? Do you need a whole three? I, I mean, it's getting a little complicated. All right, three seconds. Okay, you put put it on the clock. Done. Annie, feel free to jump in if I miss anything. But I, I've got a whole three seconds. I think I'll be pretty Do it good. Quickly. Okay. Gladly. Ready? Go. So our heroines are the Sailor Scouts, aka the Sailor Senshi. Uh, and they are made up of Usagi Sukino, who is the Moon Princess slash Moon Pudding, uh, alias Serena. She is Sailor Moon. She is the warrior of love and justice. Uh, she has her friends, uh, I mean, Mizuno, who is Sailor Mercury, the kind hearted girl genius, Reihino, who is Sailor Mars, the hot headed psychic. Uh, Makoto Kino, who is Sailor Jupiter, the powerful girl in love, and uh, Minako Aino, description to come. Uh, <laughs> uh, they have been battling evil for a while. They defeated the Dark Kingdom. They defeated uh, Alan and Anne and the Doom Tree. But they are currently embroiled in a conflict with the Black Moon Clan, a team of warriors from the planet Nemesis. And this is a conflict that spreads out over 900 years. In order to conquer the future, the Black Moon Clan are attacking the past, specifically our present, or well, our past, their present, it's 1993. Uh, having defeated the first wave of attackers, which were Rubius and the four Spectre sisters, uh, Cohen, Bertie, Calaveras, and Pets, now we have, uh, oh, and also Rubius, they defeated Rubius, did I say him already? I think I did. Uh, now they have the second wave of attackers, which is basically just, hell yes, Maraud, love her. She has taken over, as you can tell by the episode title, and uh, is about to conquer the present under the orders of Prince Diamond, uh, over the objections of Saphir, uh, all of whom are being manipulated by Wise Man. Also, Chibi uses there, but it's fine. That doesn't matter this episode. She basically leaves the episode halfway through. You, you, you're forgetting the most important part. I only had three seconds. But you left out the most important thing that happened. Okay. The epic battle in Chibi Yusa's mindscape. <laughs> That oh, sorry. She, she got sick. I forgot about that crucial piece of information. <laughs> Where we learned st stuff. <laughs> yeah, we learned a thing. <laughs> okay, so we can start the episode for real. This episode begins with what has to be Usagi's biggest dick move since the start of the show. Yeah, Ooh. it's pretty dicky. She's it's pretty she's, terrible. She's not the nicest Usagi in this moment. And it's funny because it comes, It's the scene starts as such a pleasant scene. It starts with the two of them, of Usagi and Chibiusa, both happy together for like the first time ever, basically. Yeah. And it's kind of, the implication is kind of that this is like two minutes after the end of the last episode. Well. 
Or like the next day or something. It might be the next day, but I feel like it could be just enough time for, for Chibiusa to get dressed because it's like he's still wearing the same clothes. Yeah, I was going to say, it is the same outfit, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. That's true, right? don't really have two Sundays in a row when you get to wear regular people yeah, clothes. Exactly. So uh, Usagi says, hey, you're feeling better. You're out of your very important coma that you were in last, ep- <laughs> last episode. And uh, See, it's continuity. It's a good episode. Uh, to celebrate, would you like it if I took you out? My treat? Anything you want? And uh, Chibius is like, yeah, really? That's awesome. And so he goes, uh, well, that's what I'd like to do, but I spent all my money, so I'm broke, so let's just go to the park. It's free. Dick move. Why would she say that? Why is she such a jerk? I don't it's know. It's ridiculous. Also, this scene has very weird animation. This whole episode has kind of weird animation, I think. They're like, they just look a little off. Everybody's a little stiff, too. Speaking of stiff, Darian shows up. Oh! Hey. He's just like, he's actually just running somewhere in his purple pants, green blazer, black turtleneck outfit. Yeah. Where's the frickin' fire, Mamo Chan? Well, and it's, yeah, which is funny because he is, he's, he's on his way somewhere very, very briskly. And yet, <laughs> uh, Yusagi just pawns off a child on him. <laughs> yeah, you know, like you do. Memory has got rich. He's got that dead parent money. Well, he doesn't because, or he does, he does actually, but... Uh, he certainly is pretending he doesn't because, yeah, Chibi's like, hey, take me shopping. I need a notebook, an eraser, and some donuts. <laughs> and I was like, I was watching this and I was like, wow, me too. That's also what I want. <laughs> and uh, and he goes, hey, hold up. I have to check my money. Mamoru's also like, oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better. Let's take you out to celebrate you feeling better. Mamo, you knew that she was dying? Oh, yeah. Where were you? Well, not in her mind. That would be crazy. Yeah. He didn't come into, like, he, like, like here's who went into to her mind. Uh, the five Sailor Scouts and two cats. <laughs> yeah, they brought the cats. <laughs> yep, it's true. So Usagi is like, oh, cool. Why don't you go hang out with Memoru? And uh, she considers not hanging out with a five-year-old and getting someone else to buy this five-year-old school supplies to be a great sacrifice on her part. (laughs) She runs and hides behind the corner saying she has something better to do. I have some issues. I have some issues with this. Uh, Oh, oh, do you? (laughs) (laughs) Because... And so he's like, all right, you know, I've pawned this five-year-old off on, like, my ex-boyfriend. And, you know, she can't see her mom or go home, so she should get to have a nice day. And, you know, this is this is okay. And Luna's like, why don't you go, too, and try to become better friends with Mamaru? No, Luna. <laughs> no. He'll, he'll ask for me to, to, to pay. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't afford it. Not to mention, well, to me, the part that's crazy about it is that this is a problem for her. It's not like she's even happy about this. She's mm-hmm. very upset about this situation because, yes, she doesn't have to pay for for uh, Chibi's notebook now or donuts. But she's upset because she's like, oh, and she's still flirting with my boyfriend. <laughs> she's still she's still hitting on him. Oh, it's so terrible. What I hate is that it's like. Look, choosing to remove yourself from a situation that's only going to make you feel shitty and it's not like harming anything when an, when you, when an ex is involved, that's actually a pretty healthy choice. And Luna's like, why don't you go be a third wheel? Why don't you go fuck yourself, Luna? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you eat my entire ass? <laughs> oh, so. Uh, you, except the cats are the worst in this ex- episode. No, because he, well, I mean, listen, you would be right if this was not Usagi. It's not like she's making a mature decision. Well, yeah, but is she really going to be able to become friends with Mamo? Is that going to happen? She's going to become more than friends with him. Well, yeah. Miracle friendship. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, I just saw someone posting about that. The idea that they call it a miracle romance and not a destined romance. And about how there's a difference between those two things. Because, like, miracle romance means, like, it's, you know... It, it overcomes all these things to happen, not it's, it had to happen no matter what. Ah. Yeah, but they're still destined moon lovers. Well, yeah, we, we also see that they are married in the future, which is the literal definition of destiny. It's a miracle. Also, their baby is coming back in time. It's a miracle. 
Uh, so yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in H.R. Giger's most erotic painting, <laughs> yep. uh, Prince Diamond is uh, sitting in his his throne, Prince Diamond, and he is uh, he's, he's looking a little little upset. He's looking a little grumpy. He got his arms crossed. He's all sleepy. Nah. And uh, Esmeralda shows up with her fan, and uh, she's like, "Yeah, I'm heading back to the 20th century." And he's like, yeah, Rubius died. Remember that? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) Easy. She hasn't failed yet. She's going to several times, but maybe. And then, and then Saphir basically invites himself into the, into their Twitter conversation. Like, well, actually, (laughs) Esmeralda. Not all scouts. (laughs) Um, This is the moment where you get to see again. There, at the end of uh, Rubius's run, he shows up in that giant spaceship, and it's like, oh, shit, look at this giant spaceship over Tokyo. And then here they're like, oh, by the way, we have a billion of those spaceships. Yeah. Those enormous things that look super awesome and imposing. We have, like, a zillion. Do they each only carry five people? <laughs> they each only carry and a one bunch person. Of <laughs> in the end. Yep. But fortunately, uh, Neo Crystal Tokyo has four teenagers and a uh, very nice accent lamp that are <laughs> protecting everything. And so Saphir's point is to go, hey, look, Rubius was 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 going back there to, to change over points. And if he had if he had succeeded at all, we'd be doing OK. And we're not. So he didn't succeed at all. So FYI. And Esmeralda basically just goes, shut up, nerd. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And she still says desuwa at the end of her sentences, which may remind you is still the best because she's trying so hard to be a proper lady. Esmeralda says, yeah, look, I know Rubius's plan failed, but my plan is to go back there and uh, infuse uh, parts of Tokyo with uh, the dark power of the malefic black crystal. It's going to be way easier and more successful. Isn't that exactly what Rubius was doing? Like, with the ice cream shop and and the Hikawa Shrine and the jewelry store? Like, isn't that... Like, isn't she doing the same thing? Yes and no. So here, here's my here's my, here's my my way to, to get around that. He, he, he went and said, I'm going to go change crystal points and failed. And they know he failed because, as Saphir just, just pointed out, it, we're, we, if, if, if he had not failed, we would have been tapping into these crystal points and we'd be winning right now. So my what I'm what I suggest is she's doing she's pulling a Bill and Ted. She's going, oh okay. He tried to put the energy in crystal points. I'm gonna put it in other places. So negative points. <laughs> negative points. <laughs> so now let's start looking there, and then you will find all the sweet energy that I'm about to go put there. <laughs> And so I think the insinuation is that these places are already kind of evil. All right. She's just bringing more of them in. I honestly, I have no idea. Uh, I'm I'm up for a Bill and Ted thing. <laughs> I hid my energy under the mat. All you got to do is flip up that mat right there and it'll all be there. So basically, Esmeralda's plan is to find places that are already uh, teeming with dark energy and then build giant uh, crystal statues of herself. Uh, and as yes. I wrote in my notes, witness the power of naked lady crystals. She calls them dark henges, which I guess is like a stone henge, but darker. <laughs> dark henge. Safir, and Safir has to make all of these. Hey. Safir has to make all of these Esmerad statues. My favorite thing is that they start off like action figure sized. So she's literally (laughs) going to take an action figure of herself, plant it in the ground, and then it will grow onto a mighty oak. Over thousands of years, hundreds of years. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then, uh, according to Esmeralda, if all of this goes to plan, uh, the Earth will turn into a dark planet. And as I like, I wrote all caps in my notes, fear of a black planet. Oh, nice. That is Esmeralda's plan. Esmeralda and the uh, the the S1Ws are about to take over Tokyo. Damon has this weird moment where he like just sort of looks away and glares and then he gets this like Captain Harlock style glint in his eye. And I have no idea what's up with that. I don't know who that is. <laughs> 
Devon? Oh, oh Cap- no, no, Captain Harley. I don't know. He just gets that anime glint oh. there. Like, I, I like how you thought Jordan didn't know who Prince Devon was. <laughs> wow, you're not I paying any know. attention. Like, oh, like, well, I'm talking about two I'm characters. Sorry. One of them is not on the show we are currently watching. <laughs> that can't be the one he's talking about. Well, clearly, why don't you <clears throat> let me adjust my glasses here? Why don't you know the, the eponymous Captain Harlock, the greatest space pirate to ever exist? <laughs> and I just I just threw up a little in my mouth. And uh, so, and, oh, and Saphir does uh, rub it in that he thinks it's really lame that she's made little statues of, her, of herself. He just wants to make sure everybody knows. I didn't want to sculpt little crystals of her. <laughs> she made me. It's in poor taste, but here you go. Now, none of this matters, though, because the main point of this episode is that somewhere in the Jupon district, they have just opened an all-you-can-eat cake buffet. Yes. Now, okay. Immediately, immediately, we're, I know all three of us are thinking the exact same thing, right? Uh-huh. Shady business? Yes. We're all thinking, yeah. how did Jedi survive? <laughs> <laughs> when did he get out of eternal sleep to start this business? And my and my my or my secondary explanation is that by constantly opening all of those businesses that he did season one, he has like reshaped the economy of the Juban district. <laughs> so people open stores and they're like, well, what's the crazy scheme we're going to pull with our store? That's opening? <laughs> like we yeah. have to have one. Everybody we, does. We better have uh, we better have all you can eat cakes or else no one's going to come. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. Yeah. Like there's the, the hilarious thing about this is that the person who's running the shop is not a monster. No, that's it's what I just, mean. No. It's just some. It's a super business awesome that becomes baker. shady, but it's not actually a shady business. It's just, uh, and the name of this store is Maxi Five. This we'll get to this when we get to the monster, but uh, in the English dialogue, I don't know how it's pronounced in the Japanese dialogue because I only watched the dub. It's spelled Maxipan. Is the uh, the oh. the name of the monster? Huh. It is pronounced. They pronounce it Marzipan. So I don't know. If yeah, they is... just call the monster. They just call the monster Marzipan in the dub. Yeah. So, I, sorry, in the sub. In the sub. So I don't know if this is supposed to be uh, uh, Marzi Go is the name of the uh, the restaurant. Maxi Go. I mean, if it's an X, and it'd be like Makushi. Maxi Go. Mexico. I don't know. <laughs> they named their pastry shop Mexico. Sure. Why not? I hope so. Why not? All you can eat cakes, and the the uh, scouts are very excited about that. And uh, when I say the scouts, I mean the four that are clearly on a double date without Usagi. Ah, uh, this again. Jordan, <laughs> they are <laughs> clearly double dating. I don't believe that. Okay, is it, are you, is it that Usagi is a bigot or <laughs> they just don't like her that much? No, that's that they're on a date and Usagi is their straight friend. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm kind of imagining, like, Usagi being, like, young and impressionable and not mature enough to handle other lifestyles that she doesn't understand. No, no, that's not it at all. Like, do you, like, okay. look, Good. you're you're married. Good. Do Good. you invite your friends out every time you go out with your wife? No, not every time. But this is, okay, this is a different situation in that these are five people who hang out together all the time. And then four of them go, let's go out just the four of us. <laughs> Well, in theory, if you want to say that they're not double dating, which they clearly are, in theory, uh, Usagi was going to spend the day with Chibi Uso. Right, that's true. Uh, that's true. So the other four left her. Like, I think this episode picks up right where the other one left, leaves off. So the other four were clearly going to just, you know, leave the uh, leave Usagi and Chibi Uso to go celebrate uh, Chibi Uso's recovery. And they just happened to decide, well, why don't we, uh, the two couples that we are. Uh, go get some cake, but these... and let's bring Artemis. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's <laughs> not a flawless explanation. Ha ha! Ar- also, they, they Artemis changed... was there. Oh. Artemis was there at a uh, at Usagi's house, and you don't want to leave Artemis alone with Luna. Luna doesn't want that. Artemis is insufferable. Yeah, but you also Artemis is a cat. He can go anywhere he wants. You also don't want Artemis on a date with you, like no. ever. Definitely not. 
That's probably he's an asshole. That's probably why they keep him in a box for the entire time. No, they keep him in a box because he's a fucking asshole. Specifically <laughs> yeah, yeah. here. They probably keep him in a box because they're going into an eating establishment and he's a cat and that would be mega gross. No, I don't believe that. Like they're they're You don't you would like if you went to a restaurant and you saw a cat walking around, you wouldn't immediately turn around and walk out. Well no, I like cats. I'd be like, ooh. Yeah. At a restaurant? <laughs> It's a restaurant cat. Yeah, that would be awesome. No. I would go to a restaurant no, 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 that no, had no, cats. No. no, no. Have you, Chris? Chris, you know they have cat cafes. You know that's a thing, right? Well, I wouldn't go there because that is gross. Okay. Well, listen. Okay, but and let's I'm talk allergic. about this scene. Hold on. Let's talk about this scene. So first of all, so much to talk about about this scene because it's wonderful. Uh, uh-huh. All the girls are. F- Let's talk about Sailor Buzz. Right, kill. exactly. <laughs> They're freaking out about how awesome cakes are, and then Amy is lucky nobody punches her in the goddamn face <laughs> because the, the other three are going. I can't wait to eat these all-you-can-eat cakes, and she's like, hmm, "Cakes are remarkably high in calories. Not only do they exceed the recommended dietary guidelines, but they also lack healthy vitamins and nutrients." At which point. Like, if this was a slightly different kind of show, she would have gotten punched in the face. Uh, Yeah, I wrote in my notes, math book hates cake. (laughs) (laughs) Hilariously, she eats a ton of cake later. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. It's like, I get it. I get it. She's the smart one. She has to say big words. Come on. She's 14. She is. And she literally is basically saying, I ran the numbers on this cake. (laughs) <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't compute. OK, at the very least, Ami is saying, hey, these are really high in calories and they don't have a lot of vitamins like they're not like a healthy food. Maybe we shouldn't like go hard on all you can eat cakes. <laughs> Artemis sticks his fucking head out of the basket and goes, you'll get fat. Yeah. Like, fuck off, Artemis. Yes. And this is where now, uh, again, pretty much all he says. Well, <laughs> he says so much. He 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 says he gets that they're going to get fat. They shove him in the box and close it. And he's like, they're going to get fat. And then later he goes, I hope they get fat. (laughs) Also, also, just real quick. Can we talk about how they are in a crowd of people? Oh, yeah. And Artemis is just being like, yeah, you guys are going to get fat. I'm talking. Whatever. That's a good point. I forgot about that. He should not be talking in front of all these people Um, in the in the in the. uh, Oh, God, what is this note? I think I might have written this wrong. What, what, does somebody say to him, don't be a load? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Maybe in the dub, because I would love that. It is in the dub. They say something weird, and I'm trying to don't remember. Don't be a dweezel. I wrote, whatever it was, I wrote it down and it, it on, on my phone, and it became don't be a load. And that can't be right. When he's in the thing and he's muttering to himself, he's going, well, don't blame me when you're busting out of your scout clothes. Mm. <laughs> what an asshat. But then. I, I, I love, yeah, wait, I love though, that, like, it. Minako basically brought along a little wicker box to stuff Artemis in like she saw this coming. Oh, yeah, she knew. But then. <sighs> what an asshat. A ray of sunshine oh. appears to to make this episode even better as Helias Murad walks down the street wearing her 20th century outfit. She is looking fine and men and women are both staring at her. Yeah. She's wearing a uh, black mini dress, two belts. Wait, 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 uh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just confirmed it. When Amy is a buzzkill, Venus says, don't be a load. <laughs> <laughs> I it, I wrote down accurately. She says, "Don't be a load. <laughs> Don't be a load, because cake's a good source of of energy." <laughs> is what she says. Who says that? Mina. Hilarious. That sounds like something Mina would say. <laughs> Don't be a load. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like something Yosagi would say, which is close to being something Mina would say. But okay. so sorry to interrupt. Yes. Now the back to the Esmeralda getting uh, the the, yeah. the 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 sexy eye from every person on the we street. We get yeah. We get a we get a. Sexy shot, first of all. We get a tight camera on Esmeralda's butt, like right on her ass as she is walking. She walks through the camera that is right at butt height. Wait, she walks right through the camera? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah you're right. It is a, it's like that scene in Caddyshack. <laughs> like, go go and go and plug some, some Kenny Loggins into this. 
And then she so, starts uh, Esmeralda, energy dowsing. Black mini dress, two belts, red uh, bolero jacket, uh, accented by her red fan, which she is holding up open at all times. And everybody on the street is just like, again, like that scene from Caddyshack. Like there's a guy like adjusting his glasses. And uh, as Annie said, it's men and women. Everybody. Men and women want her. Men and women both want to be her. Yes. <laughs> also, she's wearing uh, mirrored aviators. It is a look. Mm. So uh, she takes off her signature Dark Kingdom earrings and begins searching for uh, the negative point. She's energy dowsing. She is energy dowsing. Yeah. Exactly. It's really cool, actually. Like, because I don't think we've seen anybody use the earrings for anything like neat before. Am I right? Uh, it like it sort of was like metaphorically represented Rubius's loss of power when he lost his earrings. But other than that, no. Hmm. I feel like somebody made them explode at some point. Like Rubius threw them as a as a grenade. But I cannot remember if that's just something I thought would be cool. I don't think so. Maybe. So then our heroine Usagi Tsukino shows up. Fourteen years old. She's cancer. Her blood type so. Now, wait, actually, let me just say about Esmeralda in the transfer, she sees the cake shop, but we don't get a reaction. So what's going to happen next is a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, and it's great. She just just literally sees it. It's like, oh, there it is. Uh, So then Yusagi sees it and freaks out. Yeah, of course. We cut from there inside the cake shop where uh, everyone is eating cake. Ray is double fisting cake. Is she? Everyone else is at least restraining it to one at a time. Ray has one in each hand. Let me see. And this. Artemis is like, how could they forget me here in this box? They're so cold. I didn't do anything to deserve this. <laughs> and he's like, he says, uh, I don't know if this is in the subtitles or just the English dub. He says, how dare those girls keep me locked up in here while they stuff their fat faces with cake. Yep, that's what it says. Holy crap. That is, so that is not in the original sub. That is exactly what it says. Oh, did Yusagi say time to binge yet? Or was he? <laughs> that, she does at some point use the words. To, it, I think it's before she walks into the shop. So I think she says it's time to binge. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so the next thing we see, there is a commotion. Everybody turns to look. And you, I'm sure you've been to a buffet. You know how it works. You go to the buffet. You have a plate. You fill the plate with as much as you want. You go to your table and you eat. Yes. No. Usagi oh. and Esmerod both are standing at the buffet just shoving cake into their mouths. And this is where we get the best line of the episode. Usagi says, cake fills the void in my heart. <laughs> Same. Aww. Same. Uh, and Esmeralda is losing her mind because everything is so good. Like she, the the way they draw her eyebrows and the the way they kind of angle her glasses on her face, it looks like she's about to start crying. She goes, "How can this be so good? I've never tasted anything like this." So they don't have cake on Nemesis. They do not. The Black Moon Clan does not have access to cake. No wonder Pets ate an entire cake by herself like ten episodes ago. This accounts for so much. The 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 Sailor Scouts decide it is best to physically wrestle their friend away from the cake stands. Well, Usagi has stars in her eyes and says, I feel like I could eat every cake on yes. Earth. Yes. <laughs> Which, again, amazing. But they, yeah, they grab her and, like, physically f- fight with her to get her away. And they successfully do. This is where I wrote down, uh, stop hashtag cake shaming 2K16. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. While she's doing this, uh, Mako accidentally bumps into Esmerod and calls her like Obasan, which is uh, which is a little like auntie or like middle aged older lady or just like old lady. It's like a it's like a more specific, slightly more insulting version of Miss versus Ma'am. Oh, oh, okay. Esmerod almost gets mad about that, and then she just starts eating more cake. Yeah, she picks up two more cakes. She picks up a cake in each hand, and then it cuts to the other girls in the shop. Which, by the way, only girls in the shop. Uh, Guys don't eat cake. Come on. Yeah, like I like cake a lot. Just no, saying. No, you wouldn't go. Like I, I don't. I'm like I'm not gonna sit here and go. You know what? Sailor Moon needs more male characters because <laughs> I think it could use a lot less. Right. This is this is but, you know this is your dream of small favors world, uh, Sailor Moon. Yeah, it's, it's the small favors cake shop. Uh, <laughs> but it, it cuts to the people, like the other girls in the shop, watching Esmeralda eat, and they, like subtitle. For, Subtitle. Subtitle, judgmental chattering. Yep. <laughs> which I wrote down. I thought it was amazing. Yep. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've seen in the show, occasionally they will cut corners on, you know, quote unquote extras. They, they won't really 
have a lot of you know a lot of detail in the in the crowds. Uh, but this shot is fantastic because everybody has a different facial expression and they are all on the spectrum of of surprise to disgust. <laughs> they had well, like, the, what it is is they had no trouble getting extras for this scene because of all the cake. Oh yeah, they could just like they <laughs> actually just gave everybody cake. <laughs> Uh, so Esmeralda, who has cake on her face, yep. uh, realizes she is being judged by teens and uh, and flips out. Straight up, this should just be, this is, a, this is a cake shop full of young ladies. This should be a judgment-free zone. I'm just going to put that out right. there. Yeah. Ray was not the only one double-fisting cake earlier, although Esmeralda and Usagi were the only ones uh, standing at the buffet doing it. And so. with it all over their faces. Like, everybody else knew how to use napkins, too. Yes. Two things that I that I skipped by accident because we were talking about the Japanese and I missed from the uh, from the uh, dub. One is the great scene of Artemis locked in the uh, basket again before he gets out when he's sitting up talking about their fat faces. In the Deke dub, he goes, <laughs> he goes, I don't know why everybody's getting so excited about cake. Everybody knows sardines are all the rage these days. What? He says. That sardines are all the rage these days. Sour grapes is what that is. <laughs> and then the second thing I wanted to mention was I wrote down Emerald Jam because the scene where she's walking down the street, they did this like super funkified Sailor Moon theme song that was like awesome. Oh, I mean, that sounds great. It's like the same melody, but it's like. Like, it's like crazy. I was like, what? This was, it was great. Yeah, like, this show wants you to know that Esmeralda is hot. Just like, it, <laughs> it makes it very clear. She's, she's drawn like every other female character, but this one, you guys. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I don't know if she Everyone is. in this show is of equal attractiveness. Did, I mean, if you see, if you look at the, the screenshot I did for last week's episode, I, I assembled. Her full hero reveal pan up her body, in, which was like six screens because her body is like <laughs> stupid tall. She doesn't she it looks a little weird here. Let me show it to you in case you missed it. Yeah. To continue the uh, Captain Harlock comparison, she is drawn like a character from Galaxy Express 39. And her, yeah, her waist she is so is. small. It's ridiculous. Uh, that's a uh, hmm. 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 <laughs> I'm comparing the size of her waist to the apparent size of uh, of one of her boobs, and uh, hmm. like her neck. Hmm. No, it's her neck is a little bit thinner than her waist, but not by a huge amount. <laughs> yeah, uh, her her waist is the width of two of her forearms. Yeah, like her forearms together <laughs> are her waist. Wow, those those games just go on yes, for days. No, her legs go forever. This is why it was it was so many screens to assemble. It was crazy. It is it, waist to knee is at least two screens worth of footage. <laughs> so uh, Esmeralda goes around the corner and has like a little embarrassing moment where she hides behind her fan. And then she decides, well, I'll just kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. She is great. Uh, Esmeralda is so good. <laughs> and then she has a transformation sequence where she... She removes she she removes slash changes her clothing by just passing her fan over it. Yeah. So you see her instead of taking off her sunglasses, she just removes them with magic and then changes her outfit into her standard Black Moon Clan outfit. And then we get another like pan up from feet to head glamour shot as though we haven't seen this character yes. before. Yes, it's ridiculous. I think I know why, though. Why? We had an extra 30 seconds to pad because right after that is the commercial break. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ezra everybody Rod loves, is loves that character. Yeah. So, so uh, we come back from the commercial break. What is going on? <laughs> the question I saw is have. drowning her sorrows in cake. She's what? She's drowning her sorrows right, in cake. Which is, again, understandable. But at least is she behaving like a human being yet or no? Uh, she's almost calmed down. She's, I think at this point she's like rubbing her fa her hands on Minako's face. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. She's telling the story. And then Ray's like, I've completely lost my appetite while sitting next to a giant stack of plates. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're also accurate. Who exactly ate all those plates, uh, worth? Probably Usagi, mm. but you never know. Mm. Yeah, she's crying. Again, she's crying about the jealousy of... Chibi hanging out with Mamoru. She's jealous of the child. So there you go. Uh, so Esmeralda uh, knocks out all the wait staff and then goes back to dowsing and goes, oh, this is where I put my statue. Good. Bam. It's the middle of the kitchen. Middle of the kitchen. 
Was she expecting that to just sit there for like 900 years? Um, yes. Literally, that's what she's doing. She <laughs> Again, it's going to grow into a giant statue that, that, that towers over the city. Yeah, it will be larger than buildings. It will be skyscraper sized. And then it will work with other ones to make a giant uh, 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 hole in the planet, like a, a crater. Yeah. It's crazy. It's the it, it's the idea is nuts. Um, yeah, I feel like she didn't necessarily need to like summon a monster to protect this thing so much as like keep the wait staff from waking up because somebody's gonna trip on that <laughs> thing on their way back to a cake and the, the whole thing's just gonna just shut it down. See, this is this is my problem with the Black Moon Clan's plans entirely that don't involve like oh we've just got to go back in time and kill Rabbit. The idea that they know the Sailor Guardians exist. But they they feel like, well, if we just put something there, nobody's going to mess with it for a thousand years. <laughs> like, even yeah. if you did, like, first of all, if you didn't have a monster there, this whole thing would have gone much smoother. But, like, somebody's going to notice. And eventually, like, like when it bursts out of the top of the building because it absorbs so much negative energy, the scouts are going to show up. <laughs> It's a stupid plan. It really is. It really is. Bad plans. And Bad plans. Again, and they get proven speaking of st- to be wrong. The plans don't work, so it's fine. Speaking of really stupid things, though, mm. here comes the droid. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you mean really amazing things? Do you mean really the best things? Can it be both? So, yes. Let's talk about her boobs. <laughs> 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 what is that supposed to represent here? They're, they're cupcakes. They're, so that's cupcake frosting? Like Yes, they are. They are cupcakes. Like an, it's like an icing dispenser, I think. See, because they don't. They they look too s- weird. They don't look like cupcakes to me. Okay, well let's let's describe. Okay, uh, our monster today is a monster of the week, and as we have previously said, uh, she is a cake monster named Marzipan. Uh, not or, to be confused with Marzipan from Homestar Runner. There's or, an X in this one. Yeah, I was gonna say or Maxipan. Or Maxipan, if you're, but but it is pronounced in the in the new dub as Marzipan. Okay, R and everything. Marzipan's amazing. <laughs> She's a thematic mess in the best kind of yeah. way. Marzipan like is super comparable to uh, the uh, produce monster from the the grocery store episode. Oh my god, what was her name? The the one with the banana sword. I forget her name. Oh, it was something. Uh, I can't remember. Shit. So, uh, Marzipan has fondant anime hair, cupcake boobs, candy cane legs, and little icing flowers just sprinkled liberally about her person. Her her color scheme is like dark brown, purple, yellow, uh, mint green, and off white. Yes. And lots of paint. <laughs> She's great. She's great. And her hair is like big spiky hair, but it also looks like it's like... Plastic or... or yeah, it's fondant anime hair. Fondant. Okay, there you go. Yeah. I could go with fondant, yeah. And uh, and her little and her little gemstone is just right in the middle of her hair. Yeah. No, there is a there is a living uh, gingerbread cookie monster from uh, the early issues of Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose, that I think is, is very similar to this. If you have that frame of reference, if you don't have it, do not seek it out. Oh, my God. Do you want to be... Devastatedly disappointed in the in the producers of this show. Okay. Uh, so I just was trying to see. I was looking up the deal with Marzipan to see like what why is her name, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I I was on the wiki and it talks about episode trivia. And according to this, on the original English dub DVDs, the episode title was listed as "Emerald Bakes Up Trouble." <gasps> But it was just on the packaging. The actual episode always said uh, Emerald takes over. That's well, way better. Avogadora was the name of the produce monster. Ah, uh, the avocado. Yes, yes, yes. Ezra fakes up trouble. That would have been great. Right? Way better. Way better. Way better. Oh, well. Marzipan is going to try and, uh, and, and stir up some trouble, I guess. Again, just leave it. Just let it. Nobody's going to be like, oh, we can't move the statue. Uh, but instead, we cut back out to the restaurant where uh, Memoru and Chibiusa have shown up, presumably because Memoru was like, oh, let's go get some free cake. Yeah, I heard about this free cake. Wait, oh, wait, did we talk about, did you mention how Marzipan goes, now that I, she goes, now that I've summoned this crazy looking monster, uh, why don't you make yourself look like a waitress? For yeah, like she five tells seconds? her to just. 
discreetly get rid of the girls outside because when I look at Marzipan, <laughs> I think discreet. Yes. Oh, well, you know, to be fair, she does do something very subtle, uh, which is that she comes out and turns everyone into an aha video. <laughs> Oh, and wait, and also, wait, we've, we've, what, 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 I'm sorry, another thing I forgot. What is up with Esmeralda, like, fanning fairy dust onto the cakes? Oh, you know. Yeah. What, what does that even represent? What was that? <laughs> you know. No. It's, uh, it's evil dust. <laughs> is that supposed to, like, put people to sleep? Or? I think that's what's turning them into sugar, I think, is how it's explained later. Something like, like everybody... The, the girls in the shop who are eating the cake ter- like basically look like they are no, no longer colored in. They look like they're on like black and white drawings on like strips of, of the colored animation have been pulled off. It's a pretty cool effect. But I think what it's supposed to be is that they have been turned into sugar. Yeah, that is mentioned later, later. Later, someone says that their body is as delicate as sugar. Yeah, out of freaking nowhere. Out of nowhere. It was so random. Yeah. But it's it's. Really, go watch this episode because it looks super weird uh, and it's kind of great. So, so then, yeah. as you said, Memoru, Memoru shows up with, with Chibi and uh, immediately Chibi and, and Usagi get into a uh, tongue sticking outy fight. Yeah, Usagi's like, why should you care how much cake I ate? Whose fault is it that I'm using food as a crutch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this episode's great. People start turning into sugar. And then a, a waitress comes out of the back with a, a trolley of pastries. Now, a waitress coming out of the back of a bakery with a cartload of cakes seems like a very normal thing to happen <laughs> at a cake buffet. <laughs> but for Not to Mamaru. Mamaru is like, fuck that. Grabs the nearest <laughs> uh, the nearest serving tray and wings it, Captain America style, directly at this waitress's head. Oh, it's so awesome. For no discernible reason. Hey, he was right. It was I mean, he's Marzipan. absolutely right. <laughs> like, and Marzipan ducks and then immediately turns from her waitress form back into Marzipan. And we get a, like, there's a little bit of a showdown between Marzipan and Memoru that cuts right back to Usagi and uh, Chibiusa fighting over a slice of cake. And then the romantic part of the episode happens. Which is that uh, Darian calls out, uh, or rather Memoru calls out, uh, not to eat the food, but when in doing so, he calls her Yusako again, and he, she goes, what? He still cares. Oh. I'm going to admit, that's actually kind of cute. It's a little it's weird. kind of cute. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. <laughs> that, like, but it's kind of In the cute. heat of the moment, he's like, baby cakes. <laughs> <I'll do it." laughs> Yo, babe. <laughs> Don't eat that cake. Uh, so uh, Marzipan turns her arms into uh, icing dispensers and shoots out something because <laughs> it looks like she's shooting out like icing. Like it looks like it's a a semi liquid something. But whatever it hits, it turns into desserts. Yes. Uh, so I don't know if it's meant to be a laser. I do know that we get an amazing shot of Usagi reacting to a potted plant turning into a five foot tall ice cream cone. But not reacting by like wanting to eat it, unfortunately. Yeah. That would have been ideal. You think she would? Marzipan starts firing wildly around the cafe. Uh, we get a, a screen that turns into a giant slice of cake. Uh, and then she starts hitting the scouts, and it's amazing. Because the scouts do not turn into... Well, I, I, okay, transformation sequence, for one thing. But, you know, you know how that goes by now. We get five of them in a row. Uh, You've destroyed the dreams of pure-hearted young girls and trampled on their sinful pleasures. That happens as well. Uh, so, yeah, we get all the transformation sequences. Uh, we get the speech. And then uh, Marzipan starts shooting at the scouts. And rather than turning them into food, we get almost unto Tennis Ball Sailor Moon. It's not quite as good as Tennis Ball Sailor Moon, but we do get, uh, like, Makoto trapped by donuts. And we get, uh, who is it? Is it Minako who becomes a cake? Like, yes. Minako just sticking out yeah. of a cake? It's fantastic. I love it. Yes, Mina does turn into a cake, though. I mean, Mina turning into a cake is pretty great. Yeah. At one point, Marzipan also just starts, like, shooting cakes out of her guns. Like, rapid-fire slices of cake and donuts. It's, I love this. I love this. This is the best. There's also this point where, like, we get, like, 
marzipan uh, has like half icing Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars and like one of them's a donut, one of them's a cake and Ami's the only one who's thought to dodge <laughs> and she's just been like and suddenly we haven't even seen her pull out her little computer or anything and she's just like be careful her body is as delicate as sugar if you bump it she'll fall apart yep it does how seem- the hell did she f- did how does she know that and as uh the 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 icing is piling up on sailor mars sailor mars says getting fat is so lame <laughs> Is that is that an is that an English dub? No, that's in the that's the that's a real line. Oh boy, that's from the original one. <laughs> oh brother! Oh great! I, I don't think like that made it into the. I don't think that made it into the new dub. I think they they cut that one out. Yeah, they just decided to have Artemis talk more about how how girls get fat. It's by like doing things they enjoy. It's established that Artemis is a horrible horrible person. God, what a shitty little monster! Uh, so. Hilariously, Tuxedo Mask shows up. Uh, the rose blocks a, a final strike of a uh, icing rose uh, with a real rose. Real rose beats icing rose, for those of you keeping track. And <laughs> Tuxedo Mask goes, hey, sugar sure can be dissolved by water. You can melt sugar with water. If you spill water on a cake, it'll melt away. And he's like, he goes, you're, you're losing me. I don't, I don't get this one. It's funny how you say that as though he was at all blunt about saying, you guys, I know what'll do it. Yeah, but he does say, okay, here's what he actually says. These young girls admire beauty and sometimes their passion can melt their delicate hearts. It- Sweet, sugary sweets can melt away one's worries, but there are times when that sugar melts. Yeah, yeah. melt, 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 melt. What melts sugar? Why doesn't he... Why doesn't he just say hit it with water? Well, because uh, he's talking to Amy, and Amy's smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> oh crap! Sorry to do this again, guys. But no, no, no. Go. Two more, two more quotes I missed in the deke dub. Okay. Um, yes, please hit me with all of them. Talking about talking about Usagi pigging out uh, on cake. I forget who says it. She said they say though she'd rather have a big butt than be with Darian. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you sure they're friends? <laughs> And then when Chibi shows up and is a jerk to her, what she says is, did you eat as much as a fat herd of elephants? Oh, my God. <laughs> what Not is even a herd of girls? elephants, but a fat herd of elephants? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what um. is wrong with these? Why are Usagi's friends in the dub so mean to her? They really are. They really are. What is it? Like... Oh my god! Did you just eat some fucking cake? It's okay. You're 14. <laughs> they, they just, Your metabolism can handle this. For some reason, the people making the the Deke dub judged Yusaki a lot more harshly <laughs> than the original did they creators. Just, did they just think that like l- like this is absolutely what a 10 year old girl in this age market? This is absolutely what a 10 year old girl needs to hear. Is a bunch of girls who look like Barbie dolls who say they're going to get fat if they do anything. Yeah, like, this is definitely something I need in my head when I'm 10. We, very early on in the show, we had a, a fairly serious discussion with uh, with Betty about the, the exercise episode and, and how it's so... Yeah. Like, it, it, you know, we had kind of a serious discussion about this show, like, being... You know, tackling stuff like like body image and 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 girls feeling bad about not being thin enough, and then like that's gone completely off the rails by this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like seventy six episodes in, it's just like, hey, fatty, fat, fat. <laughs> you need some cake, whoa, fatty. In, it's like, whoa, in calm that episode, down, guys. I mean, don't forget, Luna drew the, a picture of Sailor Moon being a fatty. Yeah, I mean that did happen, and we did that episode. The title we gave to that episode was "This episode is problematic." <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, geez, lay off. Anyway, ridiculous. These are all things that happened in the deep. R- r- remember, kids, uh, uh, pastries are only meant to be eaten when your 30-year-old lover dies in a park. <laughs> Parfait is not a pastry. It's got cake in it. Does it? Mm, sometimes. I don't know. Sometimes it's got some sponge cake in there. I always see parfaits at bakeries, so. Oh, that's that's fair. All right. So, uh, Mercury, uh, who, who's useless now, Jordan? Who's useless uh, now? Uh, 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 who's useless now is that one attack she does normally. Mercury Firehose Power is a pretty good attack. But she, 
uh, uses in this episode. What is the English name of, of Shine Aqua Illusion? Back uh, then, I think it was uh, Mercury Ice Storm Blast. That's pretty cool. Huh. Uh, so Except yeah. it's not an ice storm here. So <laughs> Mercury uses uh, Shine Aqua Illusion, which I love the animation for Shine Aqua Illusion. It is such a good looking mm-hmm. attack. Probably. Of every attack we've gotten so far, probably my favorite animation. I love it. But yeah, she she fire hoses Marzipan directly in the face. Who now again, she slightly melts, and also her frosting powers just wear off of the people of well, not of all the people actually, of only Sailor Moon and Mars, so that Sailor Moon can then finish her off. Uh, it that doesn't that doesn't work. I don't get that. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. But I do like the shot we get of Marzipan pulling another uh, icing rose off of her costume to throw it, and just being like so tired, like she just like <laughs> like flops it on the ground, like oh, fuck it. But there's so many wonderful things that happen next. So Esmeralda discovers that wait 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 what the hell's going on? She says because all the people start waking up. Now I don't know why these people start waking up because as far as I'm aware. Esmeralda is the one who knocked them out, not her droid. So she didn't get killed, well, but whatever. Also, like, also, like, the henge, like, goes away. So I guess the droid is, like, connected to the henge. Yeah. And, the, yeah, the henge blows up. Which uh, seems like a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, Esmeralda saying, wait, what the hell is going on here? Actual dialogue. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, yes, <laughs> I feel you. Uh, so I feel you, Esme. She creeps to the edge of the, uh, or she teleports to the edge of the, the room, looks in. And sees everything has gone back to normal. Yeah. She literally teleports 10 feet. Everybody just wo- just woke up and they're like, oh, huh. <laughs> well, cake. that was cake huh. still here. Did you, were you guys also cake? <laughs> still free cake. Let's do this. I feel and they're like all just chowing down again. If I feel like if I was at an all-you-can-eat cake buffet and I had just been double fisting cakes and then a cake monster came out and turned me into cake and then I woke up, I would be like, oh. I went into a brief cake coma. I'm going to eat some more cake. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What if we talked about everybody here is used to being in comas? That's true. That's true. So. Oh, hey, I think I saw some girl with 12 foot uh, blonde pigtails. Everything's fine. And then this is an amazing scene, too. <laughs> the best. She's the pe- best. Pe- oh, my gosh. She's peeping on oh everybody gosh. eating cake. The scouts and Tux Mask all sneak up behind her and go, didn't you ever learn it's an impolite to spy? Then she sexually harasses all the heroes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? She first turns to Tuxedo Mask and goes, you're a hottie. And he grumbles and and backs away. He doesn't, he doesn't even grumble. He is just no. pulled out of frame. He like just like. Yeah, yeah. That's what I love about it. Like, like they didn't animate him walking away. They just like pull. They just like made his frame like bounce backward. And all, like that, 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 that. Here's the actual exchange. Who dares to? Oh, you're a hottie. Uh, farewell. <laughs> and Tuxedo Mask is out. Now keep in mind, Tuxedo Mask has no reason to believe that Esmeralda is not about to attack the girls. Well, he doesn't actually leave, though, because he's here again when she's gone. He just is afraid yeah. of her What a cool way. guy. What a great hero. So so all of the scouts, like, put up their fisticuffs, right? They're ready to they're ready to throw down. They're ready for a fight. Well, first, uh, Sailor Moon says, don't you dare look at him like that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, what is it about her that, like, she just, to all the characters in this, she is, like, pure sex. So then she says, don't look at him like that. And then she says to the scouts, uh, you're the Sailor Guardians I've heard about. You're just skinny, pimply schoolgirls with flat chests and flat butts. Oh, God. They're 14. They're 14. And then they, they freak out because they're being called flat. <laughs> what? Okay. First of all, does this exchange exist in the deep dub? Uh, no, not like this. No. Okay. No. Do they? So do they do they leave in like, so do they, did Zagi just like put her hands over her chest for like no reason then? I, uh, probably not. Like probably nothing happens. Let me look. I'll, I'll see. I mean, they probably just cut that bit. Let's see. God, what is it with Japan? <laughs> Why does Japan keep thinking that women actually care about each other's boob sizes? She, she, she just calls them little girly girls in sailor uniforms and they are upset because they're being called little girls. They're like, we're not they little, are girls. little girls. Well, they're 14. no, no, small ladies are little girls. <laughs> right, right. I forgot. 
what is is what is Jupiter's response in the in the in the subtitles? Yeah. In the subtitles, she says uh, that they're uh, perky. She says, "Wait, right?" But what do they say in the dub? in the dub? Ju- the new dub, Jupiter says, "We prefer to think of ourselves as small but toned old lady." Huh? <laughs> Which is they just so say, like, weird. This whole exchange is bananas. And then, of course, she freaks out that they call her old. Yeah, yeah. and it's even like Obasan again, like the same thing Mako said earlier, except there's no cakes to distract her this time. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is, this is, I mean, this is rough. Like, the part with Tuxedo Mask, I thought was pretty hilarious. But this is, like, this is a bunch of, like, dudes who work in animation, like, elbowing you and going, women, right? They keep doing this. Okay. This is a recurring thing. You keep seeing an anime, like, even the kind aimed towards little girls that are like, hey, boobs, huh? <laughs> so then she starts she 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 speeches fies at them and then she starts to teleport away and she starts laughing and apparently she laughs so loud that it hurts their ears physically they have to like cover their ears in pain well even before that though she is like she is going off about like you know like listen up i'm from the black moon clan i'm esmeralda and i'm gonna conquer the world and everyone will kneel before me all the men will kneel before me and the scouts who are in their like you know fighting stance poses like just completely lose interest halfway through this monologue they get so bored by it and i'm like yes of course they would get bored by it they've heard it 10 times and then when Ezra starts cackling, she doesn't even go like an oh, ho, ho, ho. she just gives like this witch cackle, this incredibly just ridiculous. <laughs> and it's the greatest thing ever. I love Esmeralda. Esmeralda is is great. But I do love the idea that at this point, like, yes, like the scouts have literally heard this exact speech from four kings of heaven, Queen Beryl, <laughs> four Spectre sisters and Rubius. And Alan and Anne, too. So they've heard it 12 times. Sure, sure. So she teleports away, and the scouts are all like, hmm. And so the last line of the uh, the Japanese is them is uh, uh, Jupiter going, I think we just met our new mortal enemy. Better buckle up. Whereas the last line of the Deke dub what, is Jupiter saying, well, she's quite a loud enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Both of which are appropriate. <laughs> Also, like in that last shot, suddenly Tuxedo Mask is back yeah. in frame, and also suddenly Rini and the cats are both here. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yep, the cats just show up. Rini checked out of the episode, and suddenly she's back in just for like the last shot. Yeah, it's so fantastic. I loved this episode. That is the that is the end though, and I feel like we learned so very much. It's time for uh, Sailor Moon says. Jordan, do we have a an all new, all different Sailor Moon says for this episode? Yes, something you'll never have heard before ever. Oh, good. I admire. I love to eat, mm. but it's important to eat well if you want to be strong like me. Right. Pass up all the junk food for fruits and vegetables. It gives you more staying power. And drink lots of water. Not only those carbonated drinks with too much sugar in them. And make sure you get plenty of exercise. Your doctor or gym teacher can tell you what's best for you. You want to be like us? Stay fit and healthy. Right. Uh... All right, first of all, you goddamn hypocrites. (laughs) 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 Don't don't be telling everybody to pass up on sugary foods uh, right after we saw you double fisting cake. Even Ami decided that cakes were good for the soul. Yeah. Like, look, Ami, Ami knows that in moderation, uh, you can you can yeah. get away with a cake. Ray is just like, I'm going hard. You reach your <laughs> rule of me no matter what. Uh, what episode was that from? Because, like, obviously according Jupiter to, is there. Accor- according to uh, the wiki, it was originally played with Sailor V makes the scene. Okay. What? That Sailor Says was originally in that. Was Did that have anything... I don't remember that episode having, having any particular focus on food. I don't think so. It probably didn't. I'm looking at it right now. No, I don't think it is. It's the one where uh, it's the one where uh, Zoisai is pretending to be Sailor Moon. It makes no sense. No, no connection. I mean, look, good, good general advice. Also, it's OK to have cake, though. It's OK to have cake. Yeah. And if your cat tells you you're fat, your cat's an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Cats get fat all the time. Shut up, cats. The last three cats I have seen have been so 
fucking huge. There was a there was a, a cat where I was staying uh, in Portland, and I was trying to get outside because I'm allergic to cats. And the cat just sat down in front of the door, and like I was trying to nudge it with my foot, and I almost fell over. That is a true story. <laughs> the cat was too fat to move. That's pretty good. So, uh, in closing, fuck cats. Wow. Um, oh. Well, okay. Fuck cats who tell you you're fat right. because cats need to accept you and stop cake shaming 2K16. Uh, what did we learn from this episode? Annie, we'll start with you. I actually, my my lesson was all about cats, actually. That talking cats are assholes. Oh. I it's talking true. cats. Oh, you're right. I have two cats. I love my cats. But talking cats are by and large assholes. And cats don't. And cat, cats have no place telling you what will or won't make you fat when you run around the city fighting monsters every single day of your life. Agreed. That, that makes Agreed. perfect sense. Jordan, um, what did you learn? I learned not to be a load. <laughs> <laughs> I also learned, I think I did learn uh, that sardines are much more popular than cakes these days. I learned that uh, one cake is good. Two cakes at the same time is great. Sailor <laughs> Mars says. Uh, a, gr- a great episode, I thought. Yep. Like, so mm-hmm. fun. And I, like, way, way good. I know that I love the Monster of the Week episodes, but even the non-Monster of the Week stuff, like Esmeralda showing up and, like, the, you know, it, Esmeralda mm-hmm. immediately being super into cake is so, like, it's it's such a weird gag and i know that like part of it is meant to be like you know because of how she's shot when she's walking down the street it's like he's like oh she's so hot you know she's so sexy everybody's looking at her and staring at her wouldn't it be hilarious if she ate cake but it's like and i know that like okay that's not a great joke but also i do love the idea that esmeralda is willing to throw down on some cake i think that's great she is a great character also Let's not let's not let that moment where Memoru attacked that girl go away. Like that is the <laughs> best. Memoru throwing the uh, the the serving tray, Captain yeah. America style, at a waitress. <laughs> yeah, like that's so great because there is nothing to indicate she is evil. There's nothing. There's nothing except that she's standing yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> she has cakes. Yeah, that is it. Uh, it is a cake shop, though, so presumably yeah. any waitress would have cakes and be standing. Yes. A lot of good stuff. Like, Artemis, such a jerk. Yep. Uh, Classic. Classic. You know, Usagi being this weird, over-emotional, uh, you, know, you know, emotional nightmare that she is. Really fun. So much fun in this episode. Uh, Annie, your thoughts? I I love Esmeralda. I love her so much. I love that Esmeralda is so over the top and attempts to be a noble lady, goes oh ho ho ho. Esmeralda is like one of my one of my favorite villains. And I feel like for me, in an episode of Sailor Moon, a villain is gonna like make or break this stuff for me. And also I I love it when the monster is just completely nuts. <laughs> yeah, and this is certainly that. Marzipan is ridiculous yeah all the monsters that are like themed around very specific things which i realize is most of them but like like uh you know avogadora being the produce monster the the perfume and makeup monster that has to redraw her face after it gets washed off yeah the 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 hair salon monster like these are all like my favorite ones because they're such weird goofy designs and they're the ones where it's like, oh, the the animators are really having fun with these designs. Like the people behind the show, like, yeah, what if we did a cake monster and she had candy cane legs and fondant hair? Like, it's really the the, the monsters are so fun, and I love them. A lot of lot of mixed messages in this episode, but overall a fun watch. I think this is this is a for an episode we loved a lot. We this is short. We haven't talked about this episode as long as a lot of them. I'm surprised. That's all. Well, we we didn't answer a lot of uh, Twitter questions at the beginning, too. So, That's and true. also, everybody needs a break from this show after ninety minutes. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, uh, a great episode. I'm glad we uh, we got to have you on to talk about it, uh, Annie. Thank you so much for joining us.